say, can you see? I, I could see something. The election happened. Welcome back, guys. We're back again. What's good, YouTube? Studio B21, back again. And for those living under a rock for the past two years, at least for all the coverage happening, this past week, the U.S. election happened. Ooh, Kanye win? Kanye was a write-in probably somewhere. Mm. Uh, same with Aaron Rodgers, the Hot Tua girl apparently. Hot Tua. Hot Tua spit on that thing 2024. Yeah. What's one move in bed that makes a man go crazy every time? Oh, uh, you, you gotta give him that Hot Tua and spit on that thing. Get... She's got a policy somewhat right. But the, uh, the election has happened. We can finally relax, right? Sure. Sure. After you like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can finally relax. Office as the 47th president of the United States. Trump's stunning comeback comes after he swept most of the swing states that Kamala Harris would have needed to have any path to the White House. Our Washington bureau chief, Jackson Prosco, joins us now with the very latest. All right, Jackson, the polls predicted a razor tight race that would likely take at least a day or two to call. Walk us through Trump's stunning victory here. Yeah, Miranda, you know, what happened uh, essentially was that Trump swept those swing states. A few of them are still waiting to be called, but he picked up enough of this to make a determination uh, in the early, early morning hours here today. And, uh, you know, if 2016 felt like an accident, this definitely feels like a complete realignment of American politics because of the speed of the victory, the decisiveness of the victory, and the fact that Trump is completely a known quantity, and that's exactly what Americans voted for here. Uh, Trump essentially built a multiracial coalition. He made inroads with Latinos, for example, despite a history of racist comments about that community. He grew his standing with men. He didn't really lose that much ground with women. In fact, he may have gained some ground by the time this is all said and done and counted. Uh, and he improved his share of the popular vote, even improving Republican standings in reliably Democratic places like Virginia and New York. And so all of this signals that voters were very much excited to turn the page on the Joe Biden era. The economy, time and time again, was the issue that they kept going back to. And it sort of became an issue, it seems, of no matter how you felt about Donald Trump, you felt worse about the state of the economy. And when I talk about the economy, I'm talking specifically about consumer prices. And there's this real feeling, this real sentiment that prices have gotten out of hand and that Biden and by extension Kamala Harris had done nothing to address it. And they have allowed that to actually exist in the first place, even though we know that inflation was a worldwide problem. So what Americans were feeling at home... Instead of bullying Trump in, they voted the Democrats out. That's... And we're going to touch on this later, but Canada is probably going to mirror that in the next election. Yeah. We're going to touch on that in, at the end of the video, because... I I am not an expert in I'm not an expert in politics. None of us are, uh, but basically, Canada is going to mirror America in the next year, uh, for better or for worse. I say that's true for most countries. This, this type of, of financial instability. Yep. In this rapid inflation era simply wasn't being addressed by Democrats. That's something that Donald Trump seems to have tapped into here. All right, and Jackson, Republicans are also on track to win control of the Senate and possibly the House of Representatives. So what does that mean for Trump's agenda? It means smooth sailing. It effectively means he has unchecked power here because, remember, he already appointed three support Supreme Court justices during his first term, so he's got a conservative majority there. If he ultimately ends up controlling the House as well as the Senate, that means the Speaker will be a Republican. And it looks like he will have a comfortable Republican majority in the Senate, which means that even if one or two Republican senators may object to what he's trying to do or may object to, say, a political appointment or a cabinet appointment or a future Supreme Court appointment, he doesn't need them because he has the majority on his side. And I think Republicans walking in the doors of the Capitol building once Trump is sworn in will say, look, Trump was just given a historic mandate here by the American people. Why would we possibly go against that? So... Uh, yeah, it is definitely uh, Donald Trump's world, and it is, as I said earlier, a, a massive realignment of American politics. All right, we have heard from Trump, but what are we expecting to hear from Kamala Harris? 
So she cancels her own election night watch party last night and effectively said she wasn't going to come out. She sent her supporters home. Uh, her campaign chair said she will speak to the American people at some time today. We don't have details on that yet. But I can tell you in the meantime here, while we're waiting, the finger pointing has already started within the Democratic Party. I would like to point out with the finger pointing that has already begun in the Democratic Party that Senator Bernie Sanders has in the recent days put out a statement from himself stating it's almost like he thought he knew that they would lose because they focused too much on Kamala being a historic candidate. It's almost the same mistake they made for Hillary Clinton, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And it's the cycle that just keeps repeating itself. They focus too much on the candidate and not the surrounding issues of the American people. While Trump and his team, they have been, they when they were campaigning, they were going on about the economy, the inflation, even though, and even though it was misinformation that it's because of Biden that the inflation happened when it was a worldwide event due to the coronavirus pandemic and the cost of housing and all that. It's just something that has always bit the Democratic Party in the ass. I wonder if it goes down to like, the Democrats bypassing the, the nominee process. Mm -hmm. That's just, something that is also... Because when Biden stepped down, they missed the whole convention. And they were saying that Biden should have stepped down earlier. Yeah. Because... I wonder if they did that on purpose. In, just to get Kamala In my eyes for this, you would need to fight fire with fire. I think Kamala was a good choice. However, I personally think looking at him, the better choice would have been her running mate. Tim mm. Waltz, a middle, not just over middle age, white Midwestern Minnesota man, army veteran, football coach, who governor of Minnesota. Like he, he ticks all the boxes of the all American, you should say, I guess. The product typical stereotypical. The stereotypical uh, white Democratic candidate. White cis male. Yes. Yeah. So. Good enough to counter, like, his rhetoric. It's like, and when Trump comes at him with all that BS or, like, we'll call it misconstruction of the facts. Yep. Uh, he could actually cover say, like, that's not right. But and, don't get me wrong. People would believe him. But don't get me wrong. When it came to the debates, Kamala did amazing. But. It truly boils down to, in my opinion, the fact that someone would rather vote for a criminal, potential rapist, insurrectionist, racist, than a black woman. Just because those laws, the judges and the courts call them that, doesn't mean it's true. Fair. Just in the eyes of the law, it's true. Given enough time to run a successful campaign, because Joe Biden held in there for so long and, you know, had planned to run for a second term despite promising to be a bridge candidate. Uh, you've got people saying that Harris wasn't effective enough in messaging her policies or that she messaged too many things or that the Democrats <laughs> wasted too much time focusing on Donald Trump as, you know, being unfit for office as opposed to making the case for why the relatively unknown Kamala Harris is fit for office. What is definitely standing out here, though, is that at the end of the day, Joe Biden promised to be a bridge candidate to a future for American democracy, a future for the Democratic Party. And in the end, he may well have handed the keys of American democracy right over to Donald Trump by deciding to run for a second term. So now that that's over, how do you think the left are taking it, Rhino? Uh, not great. So we're going to talk about uh, some protests that happened in Seattle earlier. The Seattle police uh, sending out a tweet saying that they were monitoring some protests and actually made some arrests. Let's find out what's going on with that situation. we got Fox 13's Jennifer Dowling, who was out on the scene. So, Jen, what's this protest all about and what happened? Well, there was a group of about 30 to 50 people that were uh, marching through the streets, uh, wearing all black, and at some time uh, during this march, dragging scooters into the street, and then also uh, leaving some graffiti behind and some property damage, according to Seattle Police. We have not seen any broken windows or anything like that. It looked to be mostly uh, riding on the buildings and also, again, moving those scooters around and... Uh, Leave it to Fox News to focus on the graffiti for a very long time to get the message across, huh? Yeah.
That's that's damning. But, that's pretty fucking damning, guys. But they didn't say like if it was part of any political party. They strongly implied all black. It. Yeah, you know just they like, strongly implied all black, more than likely. Once again, do not take it personally from us, Antifa, that primarily have been known for a democratic alliance. Yeah, so just you know what? We're not saying it is, but but we, we kind of are. But yeah. I will say, I know there's going to be protests, but, and you can't do apples to oranges, but at least there's no nooses and shouting hang Mike Pence this time. Yeah, okay. I, I doubt there'll be deaths at the Capitol. I very much doubt that. Possibly damaging those. So, social media posts showed the group on Broadway and in the area of Pike and 11th and 12th earlier in the night. Uh, we don't exactly know what affiliation the group had, but Seattle Police posted images that showed that a lot of the graffiti was left behind here and in Cal Anderson Park. Uh, I did reach out to SPD. They got back to me and said that all five arrests that were made tonight were made for property damage. Uh, shortly after those arrests uh, started happening, the group kind of started breaking up and then eventually completely dissolved. So it's quiet out here tonight in Capitol Hill. So in comparison, that one, only 50 people, quite small. Still graffiti and all that. But let's take that was, a... That was by Fox News, by the way, which is... Yes. Famously right... Famously right-leaning. Yeah. Now, I also have found on Twitter a video... Uh, dictating a more larger protest in New York. Uh, it's from the account Raw Alert. Raw Alerts? So I'm not sure where they lean on the scale, but they generally tend to do the grabby topics. So they're just in it for the cloud, I think. But here we go into this one. <laughs> Now, I will say that it seemed very peaceful. Just straight protests. There's no violence going on mm -hmm. that I can tell. So, very big shout out to that. Whatever you, you always have the right to protest. In a democratic society. In a democratic society, you always have the right to protest. However, cannot stress enough. Do not go low. Do not go, do not resort to violence. That's not. Yeah. So, that's going on. Um, it seems to be a very cold reaction to this from the left, I guess. Obviously, we knew that. Where I don't think they were very surprised. I think they were surprised, but at the same time, you know. it. This is less of a surprise to me than her. Yeah, we, when Hillary lost in 2016, we were in a bar playing darts. Yep. That was, uh, it was a hell of a night. Yeah, there was a lot of debauchery going on. And we were just super surprised that actually Trump won. Because mm -hmm. they had the poll of Hillary by a landslide. Well, they had come up, this race come all up, it was a tight landslide. That's the thing. Like. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So. Well, ever since Trump got shot, we were just shot at. Like, you probably shot because that person here, I guess. I still think that was just like the graziest of grazes. Yeah, but that we knew then it was like that kind of sealed. I mean, you can go back to our video on that. Yeah, it's gonna be go over, it's gonna be yeah. over here, over there, whatever, whatever the edit, whatever Mr. Editor decides to put it, and 
I basically remember me, was it I who said it? Where where we saw it and I said, I would like to congratulate Donald Trump for winning the election yeah, because like of that. this. He called it. But yeah, that was when Biden was still in the in the race. Too. Okay, that was after, wasn't that after the debate that they did so poorly in? Uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, when, uh, when mumbles happen. Yeah, when mumbles happen. Uh, sorry guys, this is a power that I do not, that I did not know I had, and I do not take lightly now. You have the announcer's curse. I have the announcer's curse. Good lord, 28 to 3. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what do you think this means for Canada here? Not our home country. Our home country. So. Where, where you don't know where we live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't know where we live. Mm. Oh God. <laughs> um, I, I think it's set a precedent that the well, the thing is with Canada, I think we are going to have the same kind of vote. To be honest with you, uh, the people are going to vote for the conservative leader in Canada. We have the liberal not, leadership now. Not because of his policies. If anything, his policies are might be like Trump and damn us because for one, he wants to get rid of like the universal health care and make it a for-profit system like America. Yeah, but that breaks out the Exactly. But um, I believe that some a majority of Canadians, unfortunately, are just fed up with Trudeau. Yeah. He is the face. He is the face that they direct all their hate to online and in the streets. And it's going to be essentially the same thing as Kamala. They Trudeau may have better policies, but it's the fact that he's Trudeau. They're gonna vote. They're gonna vote the Liberal Party out. It's whoever was in power during this and rapid again. change in know, the world. Like. The multiple once in a lifetime events that happen within the next four so. Takes it takes it takes a long cigarette drag going back PTSD. <laughs> it's like okay. <laughs> Do you still have your toilet paper you were still doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think we're Canada is gonna be a conservative majority in the next election. Um, and the thing is, you can always say you can for those who don't know, Canada is not a two-party system. It's actually a multi-party system. However, the two biggest are the conservatives and the liberals. You the have liberal was more left-leaning. Conservative, a little more right, blah, 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 blah. But you have the middle parties of the NDP, the Bloc Québécois, and the Green Party. However, those three parties together only make up about 12%. Yeah, and... Um... And it feels as though like any time you cast a vote for them, you're throwing your vote away. Yeah, because they're more on the left leading. Uh, the Bloc Quebec law is middle of the road, mm. right? But but it's also only half of Quebec that votes for it. Yeah, they the, only the, ever the world, have four world seats world in Parliament. So there was a time there where they were the official opposition, mm -hmm. where like Quebec is big enough to have enough seats to be second biggest party in Canada. But that was basically a Quebec sweep yeah. for the block. So, uh, that being said, uh, having a majority back in Canada, which we haven't had in a couple of decades, so that would be a real change in the political landscape. And it will, and I, you could feel that comes where it's a no, vote, you feel vote them it out the yeah. rather than vote people in. But I gotta say, Peter Politiv. Yeah, Polyev. Right. Polyev. He's very caring. Mm. He's great with words. And it's like, I, it's like, he was even for the trucker protester, which I did not agree with. Yeah. But just to hear him talk, just where he could have people shout at him and be angry. And it's like, you know what? Let's talk about this. Are you angry? And then completely so turn him around. It's like, Wow. A little story for you, actually. The past, when in the past few weeks, at one of my one of my three jobs, I was working an event. It's like a Mexican. I, I might as well be. No, no, no camera, no camera. The protection. My name is Luis. Soy soy gringo here, working three jobs, uh, and doing this at the same time. So you know, I love you guys. Hey. But you can see the deadness in my eyes sometimes, right? He had that before. Yeah. Uh, that's from working with him. But I was at an event where 
uh, in Mississauga, where our ex-mayor Bonnie Crombie spoke. Bonnie! Bonnie Crombie, now the leader of the uh, provincial Liberal Party. Okay. Uh, so the opposing of Doug Ford's conservatives, because Doug Ford is premier, correct? Yes. Yes. So she is wide known and said in my in Mississauga that Bonnie Crombie, when she took over for our longtime mayor of 50 years, the Hazel hur- McCallion. The hurricane. The hurricane, Hazel McCallion. That she was using the mayor's podium as a step up, as to get her foot in the door to provincial politics, not just municipal. And she did not get a lot of support for that, even though it was widely rumors. And she did a speech at the event I was working. And to be honest, I'm not a fan of hers, but she is charismatic as hell. She does a hell of a fucking speech. Ooh. And it. As much as I don't like her, I respect her for it. So that's what Paul Iver is doing right now. I think. Oh yeah, like I, like I've been a long time left leading person, but to hear this guy talk and to see his tweets and see like how he actually just talks to people, mm-hmm. like mad respect for this guy. And if he was on any other party, like if he was with the Liberals, then he would be the new leader. He would be the new yeah, right? and if he started a new, he's he's this year. He's this age is Jack Layden. That's a name I have not heard. Why? Jack Layden was Jack the leader was of the re- NDP party. Yep, and they were an obscure third party. Uh, but they grew in up. popularity when he was their leader. Yes, and I voted for them when yeah, he was their leader. He was part of the Orange Crust because uh, NDPs are you not know, represented by them. And he brought them up where he could have been the prime minister. He was taken too soon from us. I believe it was cancer. He was cancer, yes. And you know, his wife, Olivia Chow, is the mayor of Toronto. Chow, the mayor. He was forming a coalition to be the prime minister. Mm-hmm. To take it away from... Uh, and I truly believe he would have been a great prime minister. Yeah. To take it away from the conservative leader at the time. And they you know, absolved the government. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, great guy, but that's what I'm saying. Where really. like just the charismatic leadership could change the thing. That's what Trump has done. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, guys, let us know. Let us know how you're feeling about this. Let us know if you've made it to the end of this video. Congratulations. Love you. Love you guys so much. Let us know how you feel. Uh, regardless of how you vote, make sure you do your civic duty and vote. And regardless of the event, just stay with the people you want. That's all you can do in these times. Now. Give them a hug and kiss for me. Yep. And uh, be kind to you, be kind to others. And we'll see you again soon. Have a great time, guys. Love you.